Energy of Shahidi music reminds me of the sun's energy in some form. Not in a sense that it is light or joyful, not necessarily. And when I allowed myself to dip into it, to literally plunge head first, I was confused, totally confused about what to do, how to bring this all together. And all of it in this rhythmic formula, with such ornamental polyphony. What happens is some kind of, of ritual impulse. And you want to begin to dance in folk costumes. He hears and feels the orchestra well. I like that also. It shows not only his professionalism, but his natural talent. Talib Khan Shahidi's music is always spicy and spectacular. At any moment, it can be even contemplative and meditative, but it still contains some thermonuclear charge. Shahidi's music for me means all the boiling turbulence under the wild temperatures. You see, time is aging everything that we consider young, but meanwhile rejuvenates the deeds of ancient days. Often in my childhood and adolescence and in my older age, I was sitting on a river bank by the water in Vazob Gorj. The river flowing, it is rarely quiet, as if silence pianissimo, like legato. But sometimes there were violent waves and it was a little a little scary, especially for a child. I started to portray it in music and in rhythm, in different ways, polyrhythm, movement of water in one rhythm, music, on the contrary, in a different, slow motion. This tunes your mind to certain thoughts about the transience of time, because that's how it is. The mountain is still here, and all around it has changed. No huts, no bridge, which led to this mountain.
А что, не узнали, что Haven't you recognized me? Students are in shock. Staging goes on. Well done. Too bad that Ter Osipov is not here. Ter Osipov. Ter Osipov, he should be... No, only his students are here, and where is he himself? In the hall. No. We will find him in some classroom. Now this college is named after Ahmad Babukulov, a magnificent singer, a graduate of the Moscow Conservatory. In his time, this great tenor sang my father's and other composers' songs. We studied under Yuri Grigorievich Terosipov. My father, at the time chairman of the Union of Composers, invited him to teach here. His composition class has become a phenomenon for us, for the musical life of a republic. He played superbly, read Chopin and Scriabin from a sheet, and Prokofiev's Visions Fugitives showed for us composition exercises which we could do, mimicking these prominent music masters. I was deeply smitten with his improvisations. He stayed with us at our house, and it was then I decided that I should study music and composition. Yuri Grigorievich Terosipov had survived a childhood disease which made him unable to walk without crutches. We carried him to a car and, and when we were carrying him, he made jokes about it or would speak about all kinds of things as if it was totally normal. It was so unusual for us. He was a friend and a teacher and an assistant in so many different ways. I want to say that I already started to feel sad that time is running out back then. And I wrote a prelude. I don't know if it's for a concert or not, but I titled it The Weeping Willow. his spiritual fullness of life in all senses, and his calmness, so light. In those moments when he was leaving this world, I was next to him, in Moscow, in his apartment. And 
he wrote me a note and read it to me. It was like the last will. As always, he joked, in all circumstances of life, cheerfully somehow. I still keep his note. So, something like this. An academic musician, which I am, picks up this music, totally saturated, maybe even oversaturated, sometimes with this national energy. And at some point, I transform in a person of that culture. This is an amazing feeling. I don't know what else can give me a chance to feel a woman of another civilization, more ancient. Talibkhon looks to the west with one hand and to the east with the other hand. There is like this point of a golden intersection in his work between national color and foundational European roots associated with the structure of the musical material. When the music has long bridges, it's wonderful. When it leaves there, far back and far forward. Here too. Remove this? This remains too. I see. There are echoes of Tajik melodies, three or four thousand years old. And they even, you know, maybe not original, they're not quotes, but that's their structure, their atmosphere, it goes there. Adagio for strings is insanely hard work. There is a lot of very personal stuff there. It's a very subjective work. That's why I understand it so well.
My greetings. We have guests. <laughs> Please stay and talk. This is the house of my father, composer Ziadullah Shahidi, one of the founders of Tajik modern music. Now it's the Republican Museum of Musical Culture of the Republic of Tajikistan. This is Suzanne style traditional sewing. I had the good fortune to observe the work of my mother, who was a true master of this craft. No need to take it, okay? Here, let's watch this. We will watch this. Yes. <laughs> When I left after school for Moscow, Mama was very worried. It was such a shock for her because for the first time one of her children was leaving so far. And so what she was earning, she was sending to me as a scholarship from herself. And I was very grateful to her and always tried to come back home on vacations to be with her. In the winter, she knew that it was very cold in Moscow. And students were often malnourished. She sent me homemade rice pilaf on a regular flight from Dushanbe to Moscow. You could eat it right away. That is, it was still warm almost. It was wrapped as if in a thermos. So, I think it's normal because it's steamed rice. Here what we are doing is, I cook white pilaf Bukhara style. Actually, I added saffron here. We shopped at the market for saffron and turmeric, which make pilaf very delicious. I will cover it now so proper boiling begins, that's all. I understand his music very well. For 43 years that we've lived together, I've learned to understand it. is in life as in his music, but he never shows it to anybody. Only the closest people know it, but that's all inside him, and it passes through music. He holds it inside of him, but his music is very expressive. Now come on, I'll help you with your clothes.
отец исполнял фольклорные мелодии на... My father performed folk tunes on a wide variety of instruments. And one of these was a nai. It's a long flute. Very poetic. Something similar to Armenian duduk, but with another timbre. My father was searching for the truth his whole life. And he told me, you started on this journey, you can achieve more than I did. He meant, of course, symphonic music, because I could not outdo him in romances and in melodies. I won't be able to reinterpret our poetry the way he did it. Talibkhan is a man of the world. He has a keen interest in other cultures. There was a song cycle with two compositions to the verses of Ryokan, a Japanese 19th century monk who lived a very solitary life. He practiced calligraphy and poetry, very, very interesting verses. And here's this music that conveys the element of Zen which is completely different from everything else that goes into the program. This cycle is called the imperfection of our world. State Academic Opera and Ballet Theatre, now named after Sadruddin Aini, built and planned by the Leningrad architects. Oh, the cruel sky, the merciless God. You have never helped anybody. If you see that my heart has been charred with grief, you immediately add another burn. When many specialists were directed here at the outbreak of the war, it was also the beginning of another era, the era of the development of musical art. Ballet. Ballet Rubayet by Chayam was conceived in the late 1970s, and we managed to do it, I believe, thanks to some eventualities. At the USSR Union of Composers Cafeteria, I met Vladimir Alexandrovich Tchaikovsky, then director of Stanislavsky and Nemirovich Danchenko Theatre and famous composer Karen Khachturian, who also attended there. Our application was eventually approved because the libretto was written by Vladimir Tchaikovsky. He had such a big experience of working with other authors, and we got to work. is a meditation on the meaning of Genesis by Chayam. I would compare this world with a chessboard. Past day, past night, and pawns are you and me. They'll move us. 
and put into a dark box for rest. They'll move us and put into a dark box for a rest. This translation, a loose translation by a Russian translator, is probably somewhat different from the original poem by Chaim, which is more ambivalent. We had six people in our class, and Talib and I, we became friends very quickly. Maybe because his father, Ziadullo Shahidi, was a famous composer in Tajikistan and was, as I recall, practically the founder of their union of composers. Talib introduced me to his father. And later, Talib worked with my father, who wrote the libretto for the ballet for him. Sounds great. That is, our fathers somehow cemented, so to speak, my relationship with Talib. With Tchaikovsky, we went to the contest of contemporary music in the United States in 1987. And we brought back two medals. The first one, naturally, by Tchaikovsky, and the second one, by me. <laughs> Excellent work, Potemkin. Potemkin. That's how his symphony was called. We have probably had close aesthetic beliefs and tastes, much closer than with others. He was very charming and sincere. All my girlfriends and then wives, everyone said, oh, what a beautiful guy. Oh, so handsome. Talib is so handsome. This is Tverskoy Boulevard. I recall that we spent time here with course mates. Walks, meetings, this and the Philharmonic concerts. This and concerts conducted by, say, Maxim Shostakovich, who was... I was still a student, but he performed my piece, Makom Capriccio, for string orchestra. And in the hall sat Dmitri Dmitrievich Shostakovich. And, by the way, sometime during those years, he said, the old man liked it. I certainly thought this was very polite by Dmitry Dmitrievich because it was his goodwill gesture. I have a lot of memories of this hall, Alma Mater, from the earliest episodes of student life and then the final exams which took place here. Where this passage is, that's where our professors sat. And here, for the first time, my symphonic poem Sado played with a state orchestra. It was led by Valery Gergiev. To 
What we see here now are ancient architectures, more related to Persian or Iranian melodics. If they sit here and start to play Mugam melodies, we will see these patterns too in their performance. In a subtle interpretation, intonation and in perfection of musical instruments. This sewing and architecture, all this and mainly colors, colors which are very similar to these musical improvisations and the Mugam foundation that presents in Iran. While I was studying, Aram Ilyich Khachturian told me, your original only when you used your folklore, your traditions. If we talk about him as a composer who combines two traditions, one is absolutely classical school, of a student of Aram Ilich Khachaturian, of the Moscow Conservatory graduate, and the other is this unusual, in a good sense, unbridled energy of folk music. He he can do something with an Eastern temperament. When he wants, he can write such things that you wouldn't distinguish him from any master of the Western or American, European traditions. This unique spirit, this synthesis of folk music, some kind of dance, some kind of unbridled spirit, in a sense. And at the same time, such a very aristocratic style of writing, which Talib Khan probably inherited from his teacher, Aram Khachturian. It was the 35th class at the Moscow Conservatory. I will remember it for the rest of my life. And when he entered, it was such a presence, a figure on which the whole world has already spoken. He sat at the instrument, he made his comments, and at the same time he told me, you have very interesting tonal formations which do not present in other folklore. Yes, there are only 12 notes, but this combination is absent in Armenian music, say, or in Hungarian music. And here in the Tajik music, it is present. Tashir is a festival of song and art, and I offered to write for the 110th anniversary of the teacher, a rhapsody on the theme Intonation of Aram Hachturian, but with a duduk. It meant returning once again and one more master class from him. He 
he saw it and knew himself and apparently experienced that time is always limited in our life, limited in all senses. During one of the lessons at his home, he took this picture out. He said, this photo was made in America and it will never turn yellow because of a special paper, special photo. Here is the picture from 1971. And he wrote, Tolib, don't waste your time. Aram Hachturian. My father and I were at a plenary session of the Union of Composers of the USSR in Moscow. Then I decided to go to conservatory, see how things are, meet some friends, to talk to them. Then someone from my department said, the military enlistment office people are looking for you. And so it happened that I was sent directly from there to the Taman Regiment. I remember one of the exercises. I was in the infantry with a grenade launcher skiing. Went to the shooting range, did my target shooting and got for this a couple days off. I went to Moscow, called Aram Ilyich, and he wrote this letter. He wrote to the commander of our regiment with a request to transfer me into the military orchestra. And there, in the garden, after the evening curfew or after lunch, I wrote these rhythms. Rhythms were easier to write without the piano and so on. Then I called it a festival. Well, it's like a tradition that accompanies our wedding processions, festivals in the villages. Ah, love, could you and I with fate conspire to grasp the sorry scheme of things entire? Would not we shatter it to bits and then remold it nearer to the heart's desire? Once my younger brother gave me a newspaper, Tajikistan Komsomolets, and it showed a photograph of a girl, the winner of Lenin Scholarship. I said, yes, she will be my wife. I decided it at once, immediately. Well, I was assertive in those days, and then we met. We went to the park, that same old park, and I proposed to her. He started telling me about his teacher, and I, of course, knew that name, knew the saber dance by Hachaturian. But I did not think that sometimes our own life would be like a saber dance. Why? Because, of course, we had to do everything. Ah, my beloved, fill the cup that clears. Today of past regret and future fears. Tomorrow, why tomorrow I may be, myself with yesterday's 7,000 years. Omar Kayam. Yeah,
Here, the opening is more bland in music. Generally, there shouldn't be a knock, knock, knock. These days, we can fantasize about the world of our distant ancestors in many different ways. What it actually was, one can only guess, but the composer with great imagination creates this world for himself. He hears it his way, sees it his way, and we, the players, follow the composer. Bernard, one of the thinkers, said if you put the deeds that this person has produced all his life in one bag, he can hide a lot, and no one will ever know but those who suffered from him. People began to retaliate against each other when they started to hunt for food. This started in the beginning of times. In the midst of these two meetings in our theater, at that time I was still an artistic conductor, director, and the group performed Mozart's Requiem. They played it exactly during those days. It was such a coincidence. Things are happening in the streets, close by, and this is the center of the city. There were already these rallies. Shots were heard. Kids ran upstairs to see who was shooting and where. They could see who ran out with a machine gun and where from. And children decided to look into this pipe, and I was a former private machine gunner quickly ran up to this guy and took the gun from him as he was aiming. I pushed everybody from the balcony inside the room and then I heard automatic gunfire upstairs on the balcony, like this, almost at the same moment. During our civil war, we were forced to seek refuge here with our children who were already grown-ups. Here are the cottages where Hege Gortian, Terosipov, and other composers lived. Here, in this cottage, it seems to be the fifth cottage. Here, my parents stayed. We are now at the Creative Activities Center property of the Union of Composers of the USSR that facilitated our work on creation of new music. All this united us in one school. The atmosphere was very good. Вот 
Here, he is romantic. Even though his music very often, it's tough sometimes. It's also very tingly. It has great emotional contrasts and whopping sound contrasts. In 2010, I was going through some inner spiritual turmoil. At first, I fell to it very enthusiastically. Igor Fyodorov is an outstanding musician. The work was underway, and suddenly Talib calls me and says, you know, I destroyed it all, I don't like it anymore. I say, what? The score? Do you have any corrections? No, no, I don't like anything. I will probably abandon this work. I remember another of our conversations when he told me, if I call and say yes, I will write. So I will write. If I say no, then I won't be able to. I remember it very well, this call, when he said, yes, I'll write. It's going to be all right. That's how the man revived. He sprang to life as a man, he came alive as a composer. I don't know, as a musician. His work has continued to live. I finished the concert in the silence of pianissimo, as you say, 20 pianissimo. Then still decided to add a coda, because something was already going on there. The coda has such orchestral power, this avalanche of waterfall. I put it all up there. Sufi philosophy is a branch of Islam. Maybe it's not even a religion, just a spiritual direction. I heard various parables, and one of them somehow came to mind during the festival from avant-garde to our times. At that festival, Tikhon Nikolaevich Khrenikov played his piano concerto. We gathered in a restaurant or somewhere there. Tikhon Nikolaevich asked me about the situation in Tajikistan. It was already close to civil war. I say, well, there's the parable by Rumi, our Sufi poet. A severed head is floating in the turbulent river and thinking, thank God, it could be even worse. And after a few seconds, it bangs against a sharp rock, stones, and breaks into pieces. That's what we saw on the river. And 
Tikhon Nikolaevich and Valery Gergiev almost jumped at that moment from this unexpected turn. Well, something got broken, that's true. Fractured fates. Many people have left forever. A lot was broken by the sharp rocks. I said at the time, while I'm still here, not everything is lost. And already we have more freedom to breathe and come and go and so on. No, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve measures from the beginning. Now, here. So here it is. Can play sharper as the sixteenths. Ah, you want this? Yes, as sixteenths. These eights as sixteenths. Good, got it. Show me, please. Today, I rehearse with the orchestra, which has a tendency to grow. And there are musicians who know that they will always work here. There is hope that eventually everything will be fine. As a rule, the most delicious pilaf is made by men. But I am so lucky to have all four of my men to love my pilaf. They say, Mommy, you should do it yourself. Here we are starting to lay it. A grain to a grain. It must not turn mushy. So, girls, who will cut the meat? Give me this one. I shall put it there. Once I saw my children playing backgammon in a cafe. I don't play backgammon. And backgammon became popular somewhere between 15 to 20 years ago. Became a game of choice in society, especially in the East. And I decided to write a music piece about it. It was 2007. Here is this excitement, this perpetual motion, and this staccatissimo, I have never encountered such a movement. 
Everybody has written Takata, even Bach. And Takatissima, only Shahidi could come up with. Here is an ultimate degree of energy in this virtuoso music. This piece is great to play for an encore. After some large compositions is, as we say, just what the doctor ordered. The audience roars. And here's the pull-off. Wow, wonderful. Try it, it's your favorite pull-off. I know, girls. Let me help you. So, who else do we have here? Come on, give me your plate. If one continues to look for a combination of what has already been achieved and new material, something interesting will appear that will capture the audience. As my teachers and my father said, a composer may not be original if he does not use the European music, music history, music theory, and on its foundation he must correctly apply national, traditional music to combine it all. And I believe that they were right 100%. I lament the wasted time that certainly exists, in my opinion, in every life. There are special geniuses of bygone centuries whose works are being performed and there are some composers of the 20th century who will be forgotten very soon. I'm not sure that I will have another destiny. It's better to succeed in this life, all the plans and ideas. <laughs> 